Hello there and welcome back to the channel. I'm wrapped to see you here once again. And for this episode, I've been looking forward to producing this video and I hope you like it. Now, I want to discuss my, I guess you'd call it a dilemma that I've had working with trackers and light painting. As you know, my uh, workflow for my nightscape photography is to do a lot of foreground light painting. And that is simply because I enjoy my foreground uh, subject matter and working with the subject and featuring the subject just as much as I like to see the Milky Way or the sky or whatever it is that I'm shooting. But of course, the best of both worlds is to capture both of those dynamic elements and blend them together. And that's what I'm endeavoring to do now. So I'm working a whole lot more with, with star trackers and, and the whole concept of blending. So I want to introduce you to my latest member of the family and here it is this is an ioptron sky guider pro tracking mount and you can see it here i've got it with my z6 and the 50 mil f 1.8 lens attached uh, because this is what i was using just the other night to produce an image and i'm going to be going through that image very shortly with you in post-production i'm going to show you exactly how i produce the image as you know, I've got the Skywatcher Star Adventure. This is very, very similar in a lot of ways. The only difference and the main reason I, I looked at getting this particular tracking mount is because it has uh, Ioptron's iPolar scope attached to it. I'm going to talk about that in a little minute. Um, because as you know, for me, I, I live here in the Southern Hemisphere and polar alignment has always been a major issue for me. And I'm hoping, and so far it's working, that this eye scope helps me with locating the south celestial pole and I can have longer shutter speeds, drop my ISO down and in essence get, get much better pictures. So I'm going to run you through my Photoshop sky replacement technique and I think it's a game changer for me. Now there's a heap of videos out there on YouTube about Photoshop sky replacement. I'm not going to go into the intricacies of all of that, but I'm just simply going to show you shortly exactly how I went about using that software to blend the sky that I shot with this setup with the foreground that I shot using my standard fine art light painting method. Just a few nights ago, I took a trip to a lonely spot way out in the country to shoot a tracked sky shot of Orion and a static foreground light painted shot of a lovely old house I'd recently scouted. Now, I set the tracker up on the side of the road just outside the house. All I needed was a clear, uninterrupted sky view. I roughly set my mount to where I thought the South Celestial Pole to be in the southern sky and then enabled the iPolar software in the Sky Guide mount. It's actually really simple to use. The only downside is that you need a computer for the software to work. Now, I used an old tiny notebook computer, the same ones the kids have at school. Once you've established your GPS coordinates, it's simply a matter of lining up the cross with the circle and you're done. And you can see it on the screen here. You only have to do this once unless you move to a different location. Now, my intention was to shoot a two-panel panorama with a Nikon 50mm f1.8 lens. I prefer a panorama as it gives me more room to position the image where I want it to be in the background. So, I shot four frames on each panel with a number of dark frames as well. From there, I went into the old house and set up my Nikon Z6 with the 20mm f1.8 s lens and proceeded to do my standard fine art light painting. I found this to be a wonderful subject as you could clearly see Orion setting above the house. So the orientation was perfect for my focal length blending later on. Now after shooting about 15 or so images, I was done for the night. So it's now time to see how this all went together. All right, so now we're gonna take you through a full edit of this particular image sequence, including blending the light painted shots and using Photoshop to add in my 50 millimeter Orion tracked night sky. So let's get onto the computer. Okay, so we'll start here in Lightroom and you can see one of the frames that I've taken here, this is from a tracked exposure. Uh, here we go, F 2.8, 50 millimeter focal length, 122 seconds at ISO 800. So I took four of those to stack them uh, to get a little bit cleaner image. This is the bottom half of the pano. And you can see you've got Orion there. Looks pretty good. And then I took four 
with the tripod position slightly different on the tracker. And you can see here that uh, I've captured more stuff up the top here. And you can see there. And by the way, this is actually a tip. So this is the, the stacked version of the four exposures. Uh, same settings. Well, you can see it says there 491 seconds. That's because I've stacked all these images, but it was actually 122 seconds, same as the other one, ISO 800, 50 mil f2.8. You can see it there. So this is a simple two shot panorama. Uh, I did also add some dark frames in here. So you can see just four black frames. I put the lens cap on to do that. Same exposure settings exactly. And that helps just to reduce a bit of noise in the image. So when I stack these together, and blend them. Now I'm not going to go through the editing of this sky part because it'll take way, way too long, but essentially it came out looking something like this. Now you'll notice there's a, there's a big uh, amount of noise. It looks like light pollution down the bottom. What it was, was actually the moon setting. There was a fairly decent crescent moon and I had to wait for that to set below the horizon, but I was a little bit impatient. And so I started uh, the bottom part of these panos just before it was right down and that caused that sort of gradiated look, but I'm not too upset by that because often when I'm blending backgrounds into foregrounds, uh, it looks more realistic with a little bit of light glow there like that. So I left it in, but the actual part of the uh, the Orion Nebula and all of this uh, Barnard's Loop and all these beautiful things there, it, it looks fantastic, all the nebula action. Now this is shot with a Nikon Z6 standard camera uh, with a 50mm f1.8 Nikon S lens. And uh, you can see it looks looks pretty good. Remember, this is also a panorama, so it's quite a large file size. So it gives me wiggle room. I can move in, I can zoom in a little bit, and I'm not losing any resolution. Okay, so the next part of my journey here with the editing, we go to the little building, which now I took it just a single frame here, just to show you what it looks like. You can see Orion up here. Now this is shot at 20 millimeter focal length, f2.8. This is at ISO 6400. 20 second shutter speed, just, just to give me an idea of what this thing is going to look like. So there we have Orion up there. Now my intention is to put this shot in the background behind this composition here. Now I'm not gonna use this image. This is just a bit of a tester framer. You can see there's trees around and all sorts of things here, which I've got to negotiate. The way I began this exercise was to take one background frame with no light paint. You can see the settings, 15 second shutter speed, f2.8, 20 millimeter focal length at ISO 6400. I've just done a few little adjustments here just to brighten it up a bit. When we're talking about using um, a sky replacements, we wanna make sure the sky is quite well defined. But I haven't gone over the, over the top here. You can see it looks pretty standard, starry sky. Looks okay, just as it is, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Then what I did was take quite a number of light painted foreground shots. And you can see I began here. As I've mentioned to you many times before, you do not move the tripod between any of these exposures. So I've stopped down up here to F5, 10 second shutter speed at ISO 500. Now the reason I do that is to increase my dynamic range and make sure my focus is even sharper. All I've done to this image is I've added some clarity. You can see a plus 53. And down in the lens detail panel, sorry, here, I've added some noise reduction. Luminance plus 20, contrast plus 20, color plus 50. Now, the reason I do the color is because on my Nikon Z6, it does have a fair bit of color noise at times, and I just do that. Not, not every camera is gonna do that. I've also ticked to remove chromatic aberration there. It's just so you know, there's hardly anything done to these images. All right, so I took quite a number. You can see them all down the bottom here. There's an old water tank up the back there. Now, one of the things that you'll find here is you can see a few stars in the background here, but not many, and that's deliberate. I don't actually want stars to be in these shots because I've got to get rid of them anyway. So that's another advantage. See, if I was shooting everything at a high ISO like, like this, a lot of stars and I've got to get rid of them anyway so that there's no point. So anyway, here we go. I'll just show you some more of the images. There's the side view. Now, you can see from the light painting here, that I'm off on angles. So here's, here's the light source here. You can see it light, lighting up the front there. Another one off on a side angle. So I'm looking for drama. Whenever you light paint something, you look for drama. So you get off on angles, give yourself the most option for creating something a little bit special. That's lit from behind the building. Uh, you can see there's quite a few of them here. I've done a few different ones at the front there. I won't necessarily have to use every single image here, but oftentimes I will do that just to 
make sure that I'm covered in the, in the bases. So here's a shot. I went inside with a, a Z96 video like with the orange gel, lit up the inside of the building. I'm not always going to use all of those shots, but if I've got it, I can use it. So I'm just going to select all of those images, including the background image. And you can see there, that's all of the image. So there's now 16 images selected. I'm going to right click on one of those and go up to edit in and open as layers in Photoshop. Okay, so I click that and what will happen now is that Photoshop will open and everything will open up as layers. So let's just give it a little bit of time for that to happen. So here we are in Photoshop. You can see all of the layers down here. The sky background layer is on top. So what I'm going to do is put that down to the bottom. So I'll just grab it, click the mouse and drag it right down to the bottom and just sit it there. And now with Photoshop, you always see whatever's on top. So if you undo those little eyeballs, you can see the layer underneath. All right, so just as a bit of a quick guide here, what I'm going to do is select all of the layers except the bottom one, hold shift on the keyboard and select them all. Go up to my blending mode here, which is currently set to normal. I'm gonna set that to lighten. And, and you can get a bit of a picture here as to what this image is going to look like. That's pretty cool, isn't it? So you can see all my uh, light painting efforts here. The stars are all streaky because it's taken, you know, quite a bit of time for these images to be taken. But that just gives you an idea of a starting point as to what your composition is going to look like and what the lighting is going to look like. And I'm pretty happy with that. What I'm going to do now is turn all of these off, except, oh, maybe that one. It, it doesn't really matter because what I want to do is create, I want to rub out all of these stars. Now, one of these images, let me just go and have a look here. Yes, that very last one here down the bottom is actually just light, a bit of lighting on this tree here. So I'm just going to be mindful of that. So I'll have to remember that I've lit that tree. But for every other exposure, the tree is not lit. It's a silhouette. So to make things a little bit easier, what I'm going to do is highlight this one here, which is just one of my frames. It doesn't matter which one you start with. I'm gonna add a, a layer mask and there we have it, it's in white. So remember, my intention is simply to rub out all of this background because I don't need it. I'm gonna put a new background in there. I'm gonna change my little thing over here to black. So when I rub black over the top of white, it will rub it out. Uh, paintbrush tool. I'm going up here to a hard brush. So I select a hard brush and a fairly big one. You can see that's a big brush that I've got selected. Um, I'm on 100% opacity there and I've clicked on the layer mask and I will, um, sorry, I'm just gonna make the opacity on that bottom layer a bit less so I can see what I'm doing. I'll drop that down to about 33 or maybe a bit more, 40. The reason I did that is because when I do this, you'll see where I've done it and I can still see the outline. So here we go. You can see I'm rubbing out the sky on this layer here. And because I'm rubbing that out, I can actually see what's on this layer here. And it's, it's quite dim because I've lowered the opacity of that layer. That's why I did that. I'm gonna rub right down here. Oh, maybe I was a little bit. So you notice I've got a really big brush selected. The reason I have a big brush is so that I can do this quickly. Uh, so now I'm just going to zoom in on this image. And now you can see quite clearly where the stars are in the sky. I'm not concerned about any of the black foreground. I'm only concerned about the stars. So I'm just roughly rubbing them out. And I've said this many times to you in the past, but this does not have to be perfect and it won't be, guarantee you. All I'm after is getting rid of these stars. And, and you, you, you could use selection tools to do this around a building like, like this, because it's, it's a lot easier on a building with hard straight wall edges such as this than it is on other things. But um, I'm using this method because I wanna show you just how simple it is. I don't want you to look at this and think, oh gee, that's all very complicated because all, all of this stuff feels complicated already. And I'm very well aware of that. So I'm trying to help you to understand that it's it's not that complicated, that the principle is simple. It's just a matter of execution. And like anything, execution is important. So. Just bear with me while I rub out these stars along the edge of that roof line. And so you can see I'm being not really fussy about how I do this. It's a little bit rough, but it doesn't matter because when I enable that background sky, so there you go, it looks terrible at the moment. But when I enable this opacity back to 100, suddenly I've got a nice outline. Everything's fantastic. I'll just select a softer brush for that. 
just to blend it a little bit more. Remember, I'm still on 100% opacity there. And we'll just, oops. Now, that's what happens when you accidentally make a mistake. You can see what I've done here. I've actually done that brush onto this bottom layer. I don't want that to happen. So I'm just gonna undo that. Go back to my layer mask. It's so easy to make that mistake in Photoshop because you're working with so many layers. All right, now I'm on the layer mask and I'll just rub it out. I'll be fairly gentle with that. All right, so what I'm going to do now is simply enable these layers one by one and copy this layer mask. I don't have to do it every single layer. So by holding an Alt on the keyboard, I'm just gonna drag that up to there like so. I'll enable the next one, drag it up again, and I just do that for every layer. And you can see what's happening here. I'm putting a layer mask, the same layer mask on every one of these channels. Okay, now you might remember I said to you earlier that on this bottom layer, the tree was lit. Now you can see now it's not lit, and that is because I rubbed over it with that layer mask. So while I think of it, because I'll probably forget about it later, I'll click on that layer mask, enable a white brush, and paint it back in. See how it's painted back in there? Easy as that. Now by painting that back in there, I've also painted in the background. So I'm just gonna zoom in nice and close. Just bear with me while I do this. Zoom in nice and close over there. Now you can't see this at the moment because, you, because all these other layers are enabled. I'm just gonna get a really small brush, make it black again. Just get in there nice and close and make sure that some of these stars, well, it doesn't look like it's a problem, to be honest. There is something else that's a problem here, which I'm gonna to explain to you in a minute. I can't see anything there that's a problem. So while I'm in nice and close, you can see something here. See all this noise? This is hot pixel noise. Now on the night when I was shooting, it was very, very hot. We're in the middle of summer here in Australia. So there's a fair bit of hot pixel noise, but that's easy to get rid of. And we will do that in a minute. I'll show you exactly how I'm gonna get rid of that. Well, I'll tell you what, there's no time like the present. So what I'm going to do is, is disable all of these layers. Now the bottom, except for the, the bottom one at this stage. Now you can see, if I zoom around this image a little bit, there's a couple of little bits of noise there, but not nothing to speak of. So the bottom layer is pretty good. So I'm just gonna keep over here in this noisy bit and one by one, turn these layers on. And you'll see in a minute, whether there's noise in the image or not. Now, what I've found is that the noise hides in these dark shadowy areas. So you'll often not see it if there's light there, like we're looking at there now. I can't see the noise because the noise looks like light pixels. Keep going on and we'll see when something appears. So I've got to keep moving across the image to an area that is dark. And I might just zoom in a little bit because it is easier to see when it's zoomed in. So see this here? Let me just undo that. Yep, there's noise there. It's not too bad, but there is noise there. So I'm gonna click on that layer, go up to filter, down to noise, dust and scratches, and I'm gonna select one pixel at zero threshold. And okay, and now the noise is gone. So I'll disable that one. We'll go through them one by one. There, there. See how the noise just popped up? So I'm gonna do the same thing on this layer. Filter and it's already here, so I'll just click on dust and scratches and that will disappear. See, the noise just disappeared. So this is a fantastic little tool. Uh, I'm not seeing any there on that layer, so maybe that one's good. So let's just continue on our journey here. You have gotta do this one by one. Uh, uh, look at that noise, that is really bad. So on this particular layer, and by the way, this layer is actually lighting the roof. So that, that's, that's what I'm lighting. But all over the image, look at that. There's noise everywhere. So my dust and scratches filter will get rid of that. So see all this noise here? Click on the layer itself, filter, dust and scratches, and Bob your uncle, it's gone. Let's move on. Um, yep, yeah, there's noise in this one too. So make sure the layer is clicked, filter, dust and scratches. Now I could just randomly apply this to every layer, um, but I'm, I'm, oh, look at that. I'm showing you in detail what it looks like, because if you don't know what it looks like, you won't know how to fix it later on. Look at that, that is, that is hideous. But I'm just gonna click on that layer, filter, dust and scratches, 
and it will disappear. Look at that, cleans it up beautifully. All right, let's move on to the next one. Again, lots of noise. So as I said, when it's a hot night, you'll get this noise a lot. So I won't bore you with this, I'll just go through it all, fix it up, and then we'll continue with our edit. Okay, so I've now cleaned up the noise. That looks great. Now what I'm going to do is turn these layers on one by one and just see what I need to rub out. So far it looks good, looks awesome. Okay, so here I've got to get rid of this bit. So I will just grab my brush tool, a little bit larger brush, soft brush, 100% opacity, rub it out. It's possibly a little bit bright here, but I'll fix it up in a minute. I'll just have a look at the image first. See how each bit is being layered on here and doesn't it look beautiful? Okay, so here's another one. This one here, click in there. Now notice I'm not rubbing up the background because the background is on one of these other layers. Another one here, so we'll go down there. Just make sure you continue to rub out the correct layer because it's so easy to get mixed up when you're going through these. So that's just the torch that you can see in my hand. I'm standing here, but you can't see me because I'm not being lit. Okay, so that's essentially all of the images. Now, what I'm going to do is a little bit of fine editing on some of these because some of them you look at and you'll say, oh, does that need to be there at all? And so then you can play with the, the lighting. Now that one there, for example, I, I don't like it all, I like some of it. So what I'm going to do is click on that layer mask, get myself a big brush. See, it's a quite a large brush because I like to feather these brushes when I'm doing this and actually just drop some of the light that's getting onto that building. That looks better. So that one's a little bit hot, I think, but look, th this is all up to your own judgment. I'm not gonna tell you how to edit your pictures. You can be as artistic or otherwise as you would like to be. Once again, I'm still feathering here. So that's not just fully rubbing out everything, it's just feathering the image a little bit. And I think that makes it a big difference. Now, the, okay, now there's a little bit hot up the top there, so let's just have a look at that. Uh, where is it? Yeah, that one there. So what I'm going to do, I, I, I like having some light there, but I, I, once again, I'm just gonna give it a feather. Big brush, still 100% opacity. And that just lowers it down a little bit there. In fact, I'll lower it down a bit more on that corner. One of the keys, I don't wanna lose that bit there, so I'm gonna put that back in a second. And, by, and to do that, what I'm going to do is just make that a little bit smaller, change my brush back to white, and just rub that in again. That spillage coming across this way. Now, I want a bit of definition on this corner, so I'm not gonna to want to lose that. Okay, remember, black and white brushes here. Let's move on. Yeah, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, so right here, what I did, I went across the front of this building and um, lit these pillars, these piers that are holding the roof up, but they're not all as good as some of the other images that I've got. See, for example, that, a lot of that doesn't need to be there, so I'm gonna rub out a lot of this bit down on the ground here and some of the overspill, but I do like it on this bottom bit. Look, again, it's artistic, same here. Just rub some of that overspill, create some dark patches, that's what I'm after. And that one, that one's a bit hot, so I'm definitely gonna rub some of that out and some of that. But I do wanna be able to see the, the, the brick there. Now, somewhere along the line, I've rubbed out that pole, so I've got to go back and fix that in a minute. Same thing here. Now, just remember, I, I, I like to feather these in. I don't like to just necessarily go straight over the top of them. Okay, that's the inside of the building and it's the tree over on the side, so that's good. So I've just got to find this post here, which I've somehow rubbed out, uh, and work out which exposure it is. Very possibly this one. So what I'll do, I'll click on the layer mask, get a nice small brush, white, and rub over it again. Yeah, there we go. We've got it back again. I've just rubbed it back because I was a little bit heavy handed with the brush there before. It's only a subtle detail and I don't need it to be too bright. I think it looks pretty good the way it is there. Like I said, you could, you could spend all day on these images and uh, for the purpose of this exercise, I'm not going to spend all day, but that's not a bad looking 
image. I'm looking at that and thinking, yep, I'm quite happy with this. The next step is to grab my sky to replace the sky. Now, a lot of people will have a problem. I've mentioned this a few times already about changing the focal length of the background to the foreground. But look, see, look at all the effort I've already gone to for this image. This is art. I'm, I'm expressing my art and my creativity here. And when I'm there looking at this, I'm seeing so much more than the camera is seeing. I'm seeing detail up here in my mind's eye. It might not necessarily be in the forefront of my vision here, but I can certainly see it and I can certainly imagine it. So that's what I'm going to do. But before I do that, this is starting to get very messy here. I'm going to select all of these layers, as you can see, holding down shift and uh, clicking. And I'm going to drag them down to this little square down the bottom here, you watch. And that will create a group. And see how they're all grouped under one little folder? Now, one thing to keep in mind when you do this is you'll notice the blend mode has changed from lighten to pass through. Don't want that, so I'm going to put it back to lighten. Because you can see what happens if, if it's not on light, and you can see all those ugly black marks again. Now, the reason I did that, I can still edit those individually, as you can see. They can all be opened and changed again if I want to, but it just cleans up my workflow here. All right, now this is where it gets really cool. What I'm going to do is select the bottom layer. Remember, the bottom layer is that. It's a black silhouette. I'm going to turn the group off because I want just a black silhouette. And I'm going to explain why in a minute. Go up to edit, down to sky replacement, and click on that. Now what it's going to do is load the last file that you had open. Uh, and in my case, the last file I had open was this Milky Way that I took at another location for another purpose. But you can see what it's done, it's actually loaded that as a template. Uh, what I want to do is load up my sky. Uh, let me see, where is it? This one, because I've already done this, uh, I know what I want. and there we go. This is the sky that I want to put in to this particular image. Now, uh, where it's put at the moment is too high. Remember, this is a panorama. It's quite a large file size. So I'm going to click on that and drag it down to where I think it should be. And the other thing I can do is actually scale it down here. There's a few adjustments. I can make it a little bit bigger to fit a little bit easier into my frame. And that's what I'm doing, as you can see. Wow, that looks fantastic, doesn't it? You can see the edge up here. This is the edge of the sky, and it's fitting in there nicely behind the uh, the building. I'm amazed at just how good this software <laughs> does this. It is just beautiful. It's fantastic. So there's the gorgeous Orion, Great Orion Nebula with the, all this beautiful pink in the sky. Doesn't that look gorgeous? All right, now you can make adjustments here to shift the edges around and fade the edges in. I'm looking at this and thinking, that is fantastic, just straight out of the box. There are some, and this is one of the reasons why I disabled the light painted layers, because I'm just getting a black silhouette. It's a lot easier for the software to just see this black silhouette than it is with all that light. So I'm gonna click OK. And uh, you can see now we've got our sky in there and all I need to do is enable our, our group and suddenly have a look at that. That looks just so, so good. There's a few uh, little parameters here that you can change if you want to. For example, that layer there adds a little bit of light glow around here, which probably perhaps matches the original exposure a bit better. So. It's six or one half dozen the other. Everyone will have their opinion on this. The good thing is because these are on their own layer mask, as you can see here, that can be adjusted. I can actually adjust all of that by going over here to my paintbrush tools. And even the original mask, which you can see here, I can adjust that as well. I can put layers if I want to. I can change all sorts of things. But as it stands at the moment, I'm loving this. Now, if I zoom in a little bit tighter, let me just show you what it looks like. Have a look at that. Behind the tree, the tree was only lit here, remember? It's gone behind the tree there. It's blended this tree over here quite nicely as well, and all around through here. I mean, this is not a horrible image as far as having trees everywhere, but it's got, a, it's got enough to cause problems. And at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you some other images which I've done as well. Look at that, isn't that just gorgeous? Now this is what my eye, my mind's eye, is seeing when I'm out there shooting, I'm thinking, look at that beautiful nebulosity. When I'm looking on the back of my 50 mil 
lens, I am seeing some of this stuff and that is just gorgeous. All right, so it's as simple as that really. Now I don't wanna oversimplify this because I went to an awful lot of effort out in the field when shooting this to make sure I had the alignment right, I had the position of the camera right, I had my light painting the way I wanted to do it. But as it stands now, I think that looks absolutely fantastic. Uh, the next step is to, well, let, let me tell you one thing before I move away from this. If I want to make an adjustment to this group as a whole, let's just say I want to brighten up the group, but not the sky. I want to brighten up the foreground here. I'll highlight the group, go down to an adjustment layer, and let's just add exposure. Now, I'm not going to really want to do this, but I'll show you if I do that. Now, what's happening there, the whole image is being lit up more. That's because I haven't checked this little box here. So if I check that box and then do it again, you'll see now it's only the foreground that's being lit, it changed. Now that's pretty cool, isn't it? So you can do all sorts of things. Now that's a global adjustment, one that I don't want to do, but if I wanted to do it, I'm just showing you that you can because that sky is on a separate layer. Isn't that cool? Don't want that, so I'm gonna delete that because I'm happy with it the way, just the way it is, because I've gone to all the effort of already editing that background image and I, I just like it. From here, you've got two options. Well, if I wanted to, let me just show you this. I can select the sky there and uh, move it around. So I go Control T on the keyboard and see how I can move it to wherever I want it to sit. I can also, let me just show you this. I'll make that a bit bigger. I can enlarge it or make it, let me just, yeah, there we go. So I can actually move it, make it bigger and smaller in the background. That's pretty cool too, isn't it? So essentially what I'm doing is there, I'm just adjusting the parameters of that to where I like the best positioning of it. Now, as you saw from the original, and you can see it there, that's exactly in the same spot as where I had my original image. So all I'm doing is magnifying the background. That is the whole purpose of what I'm doing here and showing you guys. Okay, so I've got two options here. One is I um, save this just as is with all of these layers intact, big file size. Two, I go up to layer, flatten image. Now, this is a scary thing, but I'm gonna press flatten image. And now all of that is on a flat single layer, as you can see. Don't worry, I've done this a few times already. So uh, you get to a point where you know, you're know you not so precious about losing work because you've still got all the original files and you just go through and do it again. What I'm going to do now is cross out of Photoshop and ask me if it wants to save. I'll say yes, and it's gonna take me back to Lightroom. All right, so here we are back in Lightroom. Now I'll just do a quick full screen, F on the keyboard. Have a look at that. Isn't that one of the most beautiful scenes you have ever seen? Now I could have spent a lot more work, time working on this foreground here. Even so, I think it looks pretty magnificent. And notice how the, the selection around the roof line and around the trees is spot on. Now you saw me, I did not go to a great deal of effort to select any of that. But this method works beautifully. And I think the sky replacement in Photoshop is ideally suited to my workflow of light painting my foregrounds. And that's something that I've been working on for quite a long time, as you know, if you follow my channel. So my light painted foregrounds are very much a part of my workflow. Now, from here, you can do a bit of adjustment if you wanted to. Uh, for example, I could put a gradient here and, and perhaps just darken that foreground a little bit here with an exposure. You can go to 10, you can do anything that you want to do. Uh, as I said to you before, with your image, you can edit it the way you want to edit it. Uh, there's no rule that says you have to do anything. And I think it's really important to, to make that clear. Um, if I was going to print this, a lot of people ask me about that. It's quite dark. And so what I would do is increase the exposure quite a bit, some, something like that, because it will print a lot better. Now, some of you will, will look at it and say it's too bright now. It's okay. You can put, if you want, a uh, radial filter. So for example, over the image something like that click on exposure um, drop the exposure and then go down and click invert and that will just highlight the center of the image a bit more you can see it there if i click on here you'll see what's being affected by that radial filter there's all sorts of things you can do uh, oftentimes when i apply a radial filter i will then increase the exposure of the image 
to make it pop a bit more, something like that. But in this case, look, I, I'm not, I don't think I want that radial filter there. I don't think it needs it because I've already done a lot of editing on this image and I like it just the way it is. So there you have it. There is my fairly quickly edited sky replacement Orion Nebula shot at 50 millimeters, uh, two panel panorama, light painted foreground at 20 millimeter focal length. And I think I like it a lot. So I hope you got something out of that. Now I've been working on some other images as well. So let's take a look at how this method can work with different foregrounds. To be honest, I've been actually blown away with how good these look. Some foregrounds are more difficult to blend, but the tools are there to give you a really good head start. Now, I guess the question is, will I be doing all track shots from now on? Well, no, not at all. I still think there are great benefits from using the stacking and blending method I've employed, look, for heaps of time now. It's quicker both in the field and in post-production. But will I continue to experiment with focal length blending using a star tracker? You bet I will. Look, I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but it certainly has a place in my creative kit bag. Anyway, look, I appreciate you hanging in there and watching. I'd love you to subscribe to the channel and make a comment down below. I love reading those. So until I see you next time, you have a fantastic week and I'll see you then.